Before you begin creating smart objects that integrate with other systems, it's helpful to understand the basic architecture and terminology used. The diagram in this topic describes the basic architecture of smart objects. On the left side, we have some external providers where data resides, and on the right, we have consumers that want to work with that data. Between the two are smart objects. Suppose you have a SQL Server hosted finance database that you want to expose to K2, which contains tables for customer information and accounts. We want to create smart objects to give consumers like reports, forms, and workflows the ability to use this data. Because we want to connect to a SQL Server database, we need to create a service instance of the SQL Service Broker and configure the service instance to point to the finance SQL database. Registering this service instance will discover the available tables, views, and stored procedures in the target database and generate service objects for those artifacts. Then we can either auto-generate smart objects off of the discovered service objects or manually create smart objects using K2 design tools and point these smart objects to the service object methods we want to expose. In this case, we created customer and account smart objects that each point to a table of the same name in the Finance SQL database. Now, suppose we want to expose data from an HR SQL database as smart objects. Because we are connecting to another SQL database, we add another service instance of the SQL Service Broker configured to connect to the HR SQL database. We have to create a separate service instance because this instance points to the HR SQL database, while the first instance points to the finance database. The same discovery procedure occurs and the entities in the target database are exposed as service objects. If we want, we can now auto-generate or manually create smart objects for those service objects. Next, suppose we want to expose user data from Azure Active Directory as a smart object. Because we are connecting to this system, we register an instance of the Azure Active Directory service type to expose user data that lives in our Azure Active Directory domain for Denalix. Again, this creates service objects for the entities in the Azure Active Directory system, which happens to be the Active Directory user in this example. When we create a user smart object that presents data from Azure to our consumers, Note that we are using a different service type because we are connecting to a completely different technology. It is also possible to combine service objects to build up composite smart objects. In this case, we would be combining user data from the Azure Active Directory store and employee data from the Human Resources database to create a logical employee smart object, which combines data from both systems and represents it as a logical business object to the consuming forms, workflows, and reports. As far as the consumers are concerned, they talk to an abstracted yet consistent set of business entities and K2 takes care of the integration behind the scenes. Moving on, let's take a look at some terms that we use in this environment. Providers are the line of business or back-end systems that you wish to expose as smart objects. Make a note, the ability to connect to many of these provider systems comes out of the box with K2. A service broker is a DLL file that contains the logic to interact with the technology. The DLL contains all the code to interact with the provider and is provider specific, so there is a different broker to connect to a SQL database compared to connecting to Azure Active Directory. The service broker translates the provider's entities into service objects and vice versa. The same broker can be used to connect to multiple instances of the same type of data. So we can reuse the same SQL broker to connect to both the Finance SQL database and the Human Resources SQL database. A service type registers the service broker in the K2 environment so that administrators can register service instances of that broker. It is just a pointer to which DLL to use. A service instance is an instance of a service type with configuration values. The configuration values are usually broker specific and include things like server name, database name, or web service URL. The configuration also includes the authentication mode to use. For example, you could use static credentials, maybe the K2 service account, or OAuth. Registering a service instance discovers the entities in the target data store. If something changes in the data store, say a new table is added to the finance database, 
you have to refresh the service instance to discover those changes. Service objects are logical representations of the entities in the provider as discovered when a service instance is registered or refreshed. They only expose properties and methods from the provider, for example columns in a SQL database table are represented as properties, while transact SQL statements like select, update, and delete are represented as methods of a service object. Smart objects just expose methods and properties from one or more service objects. A smart object can be auto-generated or manually created in K2 design tools like K2 Designer. Also, advanced mode smart objects allow you to create composite smart objects that combine data from multiple data sources in one logical entity. Consumers, as I mentioned earlier, are the application level entities that use the smart objects to interact with the providers. These are forms, workflows, and reports. 